In case you need more evidence that Kanye has reached the point of no return, just take a look at the laundry list of companies that no longer dare to be associated with him. Over the years, the rapper has been embroiled in controversy after controversy with limited repercussions. But those days are long gone and now he is facing backlash like never before. Before we get into the video, I'm wishing you all a happy Halloween. See if you can guess who I'm supposed to be in the comments below. Now let's take a look at all the brands that have dropped Kanye West so far. Number 10, Twitter and Instagram. The ball started rolling when Kanye got locked out of his Twitter and Instagram accounts after making anti-Semitic posts which caused a firestorm on social media. In a tweet posted a few weeks ago, he wrote, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con 3 on Jewish people. The tweet was removed by Twitter and replaced with text that said, violated Twitter's rules, linking back to the company's platform use guidelines. In response, a chorus of celebrities like John Legend, Ariana Grande, and Elon Musk condemned his remarks. The SpaceX CEO tweeted, talk to Ye today and express my concerns about his recent tweet, which I think he took to heart. Other celebrities like Jamie Lee Curtis joined in, who tearfully addressed his shocking tweet on NBC, calling it abhorrent. Jimmy Kimmel joked that even Mel Gibson would have said, reel it in, buddy. So this marked the beginning of all the consequences that would follow his rant. Number nine, JP Morgan Chase. Kanye was then kicked out of JP Morgan Chase Bank. The news came from Candace Owens, of course, who apparently is Kanye's best friend and confidant these days. The conservative commentator took to Twitter to share what looks like an official notice from the bank saying that they're cutting ties with Ye. Earlier today, I learned that Kanye West was officially kicked out of JP Morgan Chase Bank. I was told there was no official reason given, but they sent this letter as well to confirm that he has until late November to find another place for the Yeezy empire to bank. The letter itself suggests that the decision was a done deal and that Kanye would have until exactly November 21st to transfer his business to another bank. In fact, the rapper himself confirmed the letter was real and he told Page Six, hey, if you call somebody out for bad business, that means you're being anti-Semitic. I feel happy to have crossed the line of that idea so we can speak openly about things like getting canceled by a bank. He later called himself the richest black man in American history that put $140 million in JP Morgan. Number eight, SoFi. Kanye posted on Instagram that SoFi Stadium in LA had canceled his upcoming concert shortly after Fox News aired his interview with Tucker Carlson. He said, my SoFi Stadium show on November 4th just got canceled. I wonder if it has something to do with my White Lives Matter t-shirt. What do y'all think? He attached screenshots of a person named Nicholas Bildstein, telling him that SoFi scratched the concert due to an inability to staff the event. The screenshot read, I just got news from Vaughn that SoFi isn't available any longer due to inability to staff the event on the current notice. I've already asked twice to investigate further if there's any way to make it happen regardless, but they got back with a firm no. It would be quite the coincidence that a stadium happened to realize it could not staff Ye's concert just moments after he appeared on Tucker Carlson's program. But it does make sense considering that he brought up several racist conspiracy theories, as well as expressed his dislike for BLM. Number seven, Vogue. Page Six reported that the magazine and its editor-in-chief Anna Wintour cut ties with Ye amidst the growing controversy. The friendship between Ye and Anna was a long one. In fact, she recently wore Yeezy sunglasses at New York Fashion Week in September, but their relationship was already on the rocks after Vogue released a statement defending its editor, Gabriella Karifa Johnson, who Kanye attacked online just because she critiqued his fashion show. After witnessing his white lives t-shirt stunt at Paris Fashion Week, Gabriella wrote a scathing review saying, there is no excuse, there is no art here. I'm sorry I failed to make that clear. I thought I did. I do think if you ask Kanye, he'd say there was art and revolution and all of the things in that t-shirt. She also called Ye's t-shirt incredibly irresponsible and dangerous and asked people to have grace for those who experienced the trauma in the room where he showed the collection. Kanye was not too happy with her comments and decided to attack her appearance, which just caused even more celebrities to turn against him. Number six, Balenciaga. On the heels of his appearance at Balenciaga's Paris Fashion Week show, the brand announced that they had officially cut ties with Kanye. Their parent company told WWD that Balenciaga has no longer any relationship nor any plans for future projects related to this artist. And that was the end of that partnership. Apart from the controversial slogan that he wore, people were surprised at his speech. The rapper talked about everything from Kim's Paris robbery in 2016 to how much he despises his former manager Scooter Braun, who apparently 
apparently tried to force him to continue his 2016 St. Pablo tour because he needed to make more money. He went on a rant saying, I am yay and everyone here knows that I am the leader. You can't manage me. This is an unmanageable situation. You can't turn the music lower. This is a God's dream. A dream that can't happen without the help of God. The journey, the people who believed early, the people who sat in my car and listened to the early versions of Jesus. Number five, Adidas. The most lucrative contract that came to an end was likely Kanye's iconic partnership with Adidas. The German sports brand says that it does not tolerate anti-Semitism and called his recent remarks unacceptable, hateful and dangerous and said that they violate the company's values of diversity and inclusion, mutual respect and fairness. Interestingly enough, the company does acknowledge that the split will cost them in the short term as it's estimated that they will lose around $330 million to their income this year. Nevertheless, they have officially ended production of items under the Yeezy brand and stopped all payments to Ye and his companies. It must have been a difficult decision though because to put it into perspective, in 2020, the partnership brought in nearly $1.7 billion in revenue. So the monetary loss will be a huge blow for the company. But realistically, the pressure to act was really mounting against them and they might have lost even more money in the long term if they did nothing. Number four, Brown Rudnick. Johnny Depp's attorney, Camille Vasquez, who helped lead him to victory in his defamation trial against Amber Heard, has reportedly stopped working with Kanye due to his anti-Semitic remark. Camille told her firm, Brown Rudnick, that she was not willing to represent the billionaire rapper less than a week after he had hired her. TMZ reported that despite her stance, her firm was still open to working with him if he would simply retract his statements. But of course, Kanye refused to back down. In fact, he even even stated in a recent press conference outside of his daughter's basketball game that he wanted to talk about the Jewish comment because according to him, it's actually proven the exact point that he's been making. Obviously though, Camille and her firm were not having it and felt that they could not accept Kanye as a client after everything that he said. They clearly drew a line in the sand. Number three, MRC. The film and television studio had just completed a documentary about Kanye, but amidst the growing controversy, studio executives decided to officially shelve it. They released a statement saying, this this morning, after discussion with our filmmakers and distribution partners, we made the decision not to proceed with any distribution for our recently completed documentary about Kanye West. We cannot support any content that amplifies his platform. The statement tears into the fact that the rapper has broadcast his problematic beliefs to the world, saying, Kanye is a producer and a sampler of music. Last week, he sampled and remixed a classic tune that has charted for over 3,000 years. The lie that Jews are evil and conspire to control the world for their own gain. Kanye has now helped maintain those beliefs. MRC also believes that such rhetoric is often used to punch up at victims, despite being such a small population compared to those attacking them in the first place. Number two, Gap. The retailer is removing all Yeezy Gap products from its stores and their e-commerce site amid the growing backlash. In September, Ye severed his shoe and clothing deal with the brand, saying that Gap had failed to meet certain contractual obligations. In a statement on Tuesday, Gap cited Ye's recent remarks and behavior as its reason for yanking Yeezy Gap items from stores and shutting down YeezyGap.com. They released a statement saying, on behalf of our customers, employees, and shareholders, we are partnering with organizations that combat hate and discrimination. In 2020, Kanye and Gap signed what was supposed to be a 10 year deal where he would design Yeezy branded merch to be sold in their stores. It was said to be a lucrative deal considering that Ye would receive royalties and Gap stock based on the sales of Yeezy items. But their move to distance themselves from the rapper highlights just how much public pressure these brands face to cut ties with him. And coming in at number one, CAA Talent Agency. The rapper and fashion designer has also been released from his agency, CAA. A representative from the major Hollywood talent agency told CNBC on Monday, I can confirm that Kanye is not a client. Kanye had signed with the giant talent agency in 2016 before briefly parting with them and returning in 2018. The drop comes shortly after Kanye's controversial comments during his interview on Piers Morgan Uncensored, where he started ripping into President Biden and calling him the R word. He said, I know I'm not supposed to say that, but obviously because I've been deemed with mental health issues and all this, I have the right to use whatever words that I like to use. He then started digging himself an even deeper hole when Pierce asked him to apologize for his anti-Semitic comments. He said, racism is racist and you know that, don't you? Then Kanye starts laughing and says, yeah, obviously, that's why I said it. I fought fire with fire. So that alone destroyed any argument that Kanye was not aware of the effect of the words that he has been using. Well, that's everything that we have on the list for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.